Hi, I'm Mike Owner of the Ingrove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for May 3rd, 2024. Uh, even though it's after record sort day, and that's typically the time of the year when releases are light, there's actually a pretty solid couple of uh, releases, a couple of audiophile records here as well. So not a total throwaway week, but a couple of weeks before record sort day and a couple of weeks after record sort day are pretty light. But the tail end of it, I've got some more cool stuff to show you. But first, let me talk about this week's new arrival uh, pre-orders, recently announced pre-orders. The first one is a new jazz dispensary title. These are typically all analog, cut from the original master tape by Kevin Gray. That is the Round Robin Monopoly. The name of the album is Alpha. It is not a record I'm familiar with. As soon as I saw it was announced, I went on to whatever the crappy streaming services I use to see if I could stream it. And it wasn't on there, so I couldn't even stream it. But I'm real curious on that. More than likely, it's good because all the jazz dispensary top shelf stuff is, you know, they've been awesome. They are doing a Paul McCartney one hand clapping. First official release, double LP, uh, newly remixed with 12 tracks that weren't on the film. That comes out uh, June 14th. Oh, the other album comes out June 28th. This is kind of cool. I don't know how much play it'll get. Normally I only do very specific pre-orders, stuff that I want to gauge interest in so I order correctly. I don't pre-order everything because most stuff, it's 2024, comes in, no need to pre-order it, it'll be here, you'll get it. This is kind of cool and I'm curious of interest on it so I decided to put it up for pre-order. George Benson has a new-ish album coming out. It's tip technically a shelved album from 1989. George Benson, Dreams Do Come True. That comes out uh, June uh, 14th as well. So. Albums like that always, sometimes I'm off on, you know. It's hard doing pre-orders, or excuse me, it, it's easy doing pre-orders. It's hard doing record ordering for stuff that isn't a pre-order because you never really know what the market's gonna like. Some stuff, and I'll show you some stuff that I ordered heavy on, I'm like, this is awesome, everyone's gonna love it. And a lot of the times I get it right, but sometimes I'm like, this is great, it's gonna go over well, and that's not the case. So this, when I do pre-orders, it allows me to kind of gauge interest better. Sorry, I'm distracted. Someone's being towed out of the parking lot. It's interesting how quick, on a side note, they can get a car out of here. They literally just drive their tow truck up, back it up, tow the vehicle, and take off. And they do it in about 20 seconds. And I think they strap it down down the street. I'd hope so. Otherwise, I don't know how that would be secure. Okay, the back. We're doing a humongous whatnot auction this Sunday, Arizona time. 11 o'clock Arizona time. I've done some great whatnots. This is a complete consignment whatnot, but this whatnot is off the hook. I've showed you guys some of this stuff last week. Uh, a full Led Zeppelin classic record, 200 gram set of test pressings. I think it's almost a full set. It's bonkers. The collection is bonkers. It is mostly geared towards audiophile stuff, but it's like all the gas. You know, it's like if you want audiophile stuff, it's, you know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, the goods. Anyways, I'll show you some of it as well. You can click the link below. I think it's almost 175 items. So it's going to be a four or five hour whatnot. I'll stream it live to YouTube. So if you don't want to, if you just want to watch, if you're not interested in bidding, you can watch it on YouTube. It's best to watch it on Whatnot's platform because you can interact. You can type questions. I can answer. You know, there's interaction. I don't really monitor the YouTube, but I do stream it to YouTube. But it's going to be crazy. If you click the link below, you can see everything. It's already loaded that I'm going to be auctioning. Also, uh, if you click that link and you do want to bid, you get, I think it's 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks off your first purchase you make on whatnot if you use that link below. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I've told you guys in the past, and if you look, click that link, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is some of the best of the best audio file stuff. Ton, I mean, this many test pressings, it's nuts. Uh, and I've got pretty much a full run of MoFi, full run of Classic. There's so many things in here, if this wasn't a consignment, I would have kept it. It's a fantastic collection. Okay, let's start with this week's new arrival. Starting with, God, I actually have one over there to show you. I'll give you a quick two-second tour of this particular record. Because I saved one for myself. This is very well scripted. I absolutely love Transition. It is a great label full of many thousand dollar records that are impossible to find and sound mediocre when you get them because 
they were all made on styrene. But this is awesome. I'm so glad they're doing these transition titles as part of the Tone Poet series. So check this out. So an original transition was kind of a constructed similar to this. It was kind of a generic board that they applied uh, a slick to. And that's similar to kind of how they constructed this, but not exactly. It's a blank back, real nice glossy cover, just like the original. There's a sticker on the back, and this isn't printed. This is an actual sticker telling you there's notes inside. And just like the original, although I feel like in the original this book was somewhat smaller. I've got an original at the house. I'd have to take a look. I feel like the books were small, smaller. But it includes a replica of the original transition uh, inner, inner book. Staples and all. Very cool. There's also a little info on uh, written by Michael Kaskuna. That's kind of cool. Uh, a little bit of info on Donald Byrd and Doug, Walk Doug Watkins. Doug Watkins is actually up for pre-order right now. But this is this is the perfect tone poet. This is a record that costs thousands of th I mean, these transitions to find truly near mint copies with the book are like three to five grand. So being able to get these all analog cut by Kevin Gray from the master tape, press at RTI on vinyl and not styrene for uh, 38 bucks is a no-brainer. There's a reason why these records go for the money they do, and that's because they're very desirable. This is my copy. I've listened to it like three times. It's great. Okay, so that is Donald Bird, Bird's Eye View. Bobby Hutcherson, Total Eclipse. This is the other tone poet of the week. Traditional tone poet gatefold. That's obviously not a gatefold. It's replicating the original. Uh, the original. Let's get this out of the way because I need some more space. The Naz. This is Lost Masters and Demos. This is on limited edition purple, pink, blue, and red vinyl. So a four a four LP set. Uh, yeah, it looks like a rough mix, alternate mixes. Kind of shows, you know, if you can kind of pause and check it out there. But reasonably priced, 80 bucks for a 4LP box set. Also, another really cool audiophile title. These Newland titles are, it's, they seem impossible for me to keep in stock. And the last, and they don't, their first release, God, what was that? Just recently, God, it just recently we went out of print. So the first title that I got was probably about two, three years ago, and it's already out of print. I forget the name of it. Maybe it's a Blue Mitchell title. But this is their latest. This is Kenny Dorham, Sings in Plays. This was originally a... I want to say this was a Riverside title originally. I think it was a Riverside title originally. This is an official release, although they don't use the Riverside logo. This is all analog, cut from the original Mono Master tapes by Kevin Gray. Printed and pressed at Palace on 180 gram vinyl, housed in a deluxe reverse board jacket. But, and this is how they ship them, by the way. They come in this generic resealable with the a record on the outside of the jacket. Kind of how I store my records at home, so you don't have to worry about seam splits. So, very cool. Uh, I want to say Kevin Gray does all the mastering for Newland. I don't think I've seen a Newland release that's not Kevin Gray, but maybe a couple got away. I'm finally showing you this. We got four releases of Taylor Swift's new album. I showed you the other three. They're sold out. When I got my original order of these, the indie exclusive, they were destroyed by UPS. So I got replacements, and here they are. Uh, this is the Tortured Poets Department, the manuscript. This is the indie white vinyl version. Another all analog cut from the original master tape release. That is Bill Evans and Jim Hall's Undercurrent. This is the jackpot release done by Kevin Gray. Out of all the versions of this that have been in print in the last 20 years, like this is the one to own. Highly recommend if you like this album, that's the one to get. I did a video on YouTube talking about it and the Mel Brown. They came out from jackpot simultaneously. Genesis, turn it on again. This is a greatest hits comp. 25th anniversary. Actually, this is this will be popular. 
Invisible Touch, Mama, I Can't Dance, Tonight Tonight. Yeah, so the hits. So it's like kind of uh, all the Phil, Phil Collins uh, era stuff, kind of looks like, yeah. This is kind of cool. Unfortunately, most of them got destroyed by UPS, but I still have a good chunk of them. This is Black Sabbath's Paranoid, but this is an import. But what's cool about this, it's on red and black splatter vinyl. I want to say this is an Italian pressing. It's official, Warner Music, but yeah, a variant. Thelonious Monk, it's Monk's time. This is from Music on Vinyl, 60th anniversary edition. Uh, 1,500 individually numbered copies on translucent red vinyl. It's actually a real cool color combination. It matches uh, the jacket quite well. All right, we got the Verb by Request titles in for the week. Shrinks torn on this one. This is a uh, Gloria Coleman Quartet, Soul Sisters. And we've got Chico Hamilton's The Dealer. Good record. I'm real familiar with it. I haven't heard, I don't think I've heard Soul Sisters, but uh, this is a real good record. This is just an anniversary record, I feel, or this is a new pressing of Melanie Martinez's K-12. Ho oh, ho, almost chucked it at myself. Until this past record store day, I had not even heard of Alaufi, but uh, I gotta give it a listen to. I'm hearing a lot about her after this record store day. This is typical of me. From Numero Group, this is a comp, uh, Eccentric Soul. This is one of their uh, series of comps they do. This is the Tammy label. New album from Sia. I'm almost positive this is a new album. God, Sia was so huge like 10 years ago, and then she kind of dro her popularity dropped off the map. This is a Reasonable Woman. This is on Pink Vital, so this is probably the Indie Store exclusive. And then this is Baby Blue Vinyl, so I'm not sure. Maybe they're, uh, neither one's in Indie, maybe one of them is, one of them isn't, I don't know. The OCs, Intercepted Message. That's weird. The label actually put reissue in the title. Intercepted message reissue. Tommy Bolin. Teaser. Let's see. 2024 remaster of the 1975 classic. Limited edition spider vinyl. Only 750 made. This go four generations. This is volume one and two. Yeah, part one and two. Kind of two LPs in like a slipcase. Jessica Pratt, here in The Pitch. What's a pitch? Is that like a, like a soccer term? I'm not sure. I don't watch soccer. Puts me to sleep. Stand there. I know I'm going to get flayed in the comments, but watching guys run around and then you leave the stadium, it's 0 0 tie. Look, I'd lose my shit if I <laughs> had to witness that in person. I need action. I need hockey where there's a fight, basketball, which is very contested. Football, the best sport in the world, American football. Baseball, eh, I like baseball. It's a little slow. I started watching a lot more baseball now that they kind of sped up the game. That's kind of improved it quite a bit, but that's my thought on sports. Camera Obscura. Look to the east, look to the west. But I'm mainly a football fan. I've had season tickets to the Cardinals for 15 years. I'm really excited after this draft. Uh, I don't think we screwed anything up, so let's see what happens. Exodus. Persona non grata, clear in gold, black, and turquoise splatter vinyl. They got all the colors in there. Squirrel nut zippers, perennial favorites. 
Killing Joke from, this is a culture factory, yeah, culture factory. Live at the Lorkers Feastin. Lorkersy Feastin. One white, one black with a bonus DVD of the concert. At the Lorkersy Feast. What the hell is that in Belgium? I was going to say, it's like, is that an American name? Like, did they purposely give it an awkward name? But no, it's, it's Belgium. Okay, Deathlands Cold World. Limited edition colored vinyl. Sophie Tucker. This is an interesting album. So I actually went, I saw so Sophie Tucker once. I kind of, this is kind of uh, Euro club music, <laughs> but I enjoyed this and I enjoyed their first EP. Uh, so I saw them in concert. It was an interesting show. I enjoyed it. Sophie plays the guitar. It's weird. She kind of plays, I think, a white Strat. But they had a song that kind of had some somewhat success called Betch It. Uh, Apple used it for an iPhone commercial. Anyways, one of the hooks in it is on Bat Shit Crazy. So after the show at this particular venue, you could they did like a meet and greet. You just walked up and you could buy merch and... I think I got a photo or something with the band. But anyways, one of the lines, like I say, is I'm batshit crazy. So, and he repeats it, Tucker, like 25 times in the song. So I walk up to him and I'm like, can you sign it? He's like, oh yeah, happy to do it. And I'm like, can you underneath your you know, signature, can you put on batshit crazy? And he looked at me like, what? I'm like, you know, the song batshit, I'm batshit crazy. And he kind of looked confused. And I'm like, you know, it's like a lyric from your song. And he Oh, perfect English. Kind of looked at me and, oh, okay. So he writes on and I didn't look at it until after he handed it to me. And he did it in a way that he couldn't even fix it, but he put, I'm batshit. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe that's why he was giving me a hard time because he thought I wanted him just to put, I'm batshit on the record rather than the line in the song. Anyways, it's my Stover Ducker story. This is a cool box set. Holland, Dozier, Holland. Detroit, 1969 to 1975, absolute legendary soul uh, songwriters, I mean, more than anything. But this is a comp of looks like just tons of stuff that they were involved in. A 4LP comp. This should be quite good. They wrote some absolutely iconic music. A day... Definitive collection of legendary songwriting trio haunts. So this is everything after Motown, which is actually kind of cool because this is all the hard stuff to get. The Motown stuff has been, it, more of it should be in print than it actually is. It's really a sad tragedy how absolutely fantastic Motown was and how very little of it's in print. And when you do find used copies of that, those records are trashed. Although Motown, in my opinion, is a really great, singles label their albums get a little spotty some of those artists they you know they recycled a lot of the same tunes and they were recorded by different motown acts and a lot of them are kind of like eh. but uh there should be still more of it in print Doing a lot of pontificating i'm gonna get myself in trouble too much pontificating today on this video rubel as palaveras volume one and two limited edition ooh, from mr bongo i love the mr bongo stuff Latin Grammy nominated artists fusing contemporary with classic. Uh, yeah, this could be good on pink vinyl. John Carpenter, Lost Themes 4, Noir. Limited transparent red vinyl. We've got Bad Brains. This is part of the reissue campaign, I think, by Org. No, nope. yeah, by Org. Red color, vinyl edition. Omega Sessions. We've got, whoa. Hannah Vu, Romanticism. This is on ruby red vinyl. This is an interesting cover. I like covers like this. I like when it's an event, when you actually put time into making your cover. This was thought out, there's props, it's a photo shoot, there's outfits. Very cool. 
Needs to be more of that. Kleenex, Lilliput, first songs. I had an original of this uh, come in the store not too long. Was it an LP or a seven inch? I feel like it was an LP. Limited to 500 copies on deep purple vinyl. We've got Chaos, Atlantis Plus. Not so good of a cover. See, this is, eh. Twisted, Cryptic Collection 5. Limited to 500 copies. 12 inch double vinyl. Heavy, heavy hex, true to you on double, wait a minute, double yellow vinyl. It's called double yellow vinyl, but this is a single disc. So don't, I don't know what that means. Maybe there's two different versions of yellow on there. Culture, two sevens clash. This is a 30th anniversary edition. Sanchi, let's see, this looks, uh, what is this, looks like maybe Ray Guy? It's gonna be good, I'll give this a listen. Okay, let me show you guys what is going, again, this I, I showed you guys, I did an unboxing video, by the way, to where I unbox these things live before I even knew what was being shipped to me. I kind of had an idea. When somebody says, hey Mike, I wanna do a consignment with you. Okay, what do you got? We do a little talking. Oh, I got a bunch of classic records, MoFi, you know, and they start giving me like, mm-hmm, we'll do that. <laughs> so, that's kind of how that went down, but I really didn't know what was in it. So I did that live unboxing. You can watch the video. But I have throughout these Wednesday, Thursday new arrival videos have showed you guys some of the stuff. And that's kind of what I'm going to continue. But this is the last time. So to get the full list, click the link below. A sealed copy of one of the best sounding records you'll ever hear in your entire life. Especially rock and roll. This thing is unbelievable. This is Santana's Abraxas. Still pricey record but absolutely fantastic. Bill Evans, Sunday at the Village Vanguard, the only one step that was done from the analog master tape and probably the only one step that ever will be analog. But yeah, I think there's a Donald Fagan Nightfly in this as well. So those are like the three big ones. I think so, double check the link. All sealed, uh, Half Speed Mastered, Journey's Escape. All of these, by the way, have been ultrasonic cleaned. Although I normally don't do that for consignments, I did it because of the caliber of this auction. I wanted everybody to get everything as nice as possible. A classic records 200 gram of the Allman Brothers, Fillmore. Really, I dig this record. One of the better DCCs, Steve Hoffman, Kevin Gray Cut, Elton John's greatest hits. Very rare, these DCs are very tough to find. I showed you guys a bunch of the classic records test pressings last week. Here's another one. In through the outdoor. Like I said, this wasn't a consignment. This was a collection I bought. I would show you guys this particular record, not as a precursor to the auction, but as a see what Mike's, you know, that video I do, see what Mike's bringing home this week. That's where you would see that record because I'd take it. This I thought was actually counterfeit when I first saw it, but no, this is an official release of Ozzy Osbourne's Osmosis. I think this was a South Korean. I looked it up on Discogs, yeah. This is an official South Korean release of this album on 500 copies on red transparent vinyl with black dust. Very rare, very expensive. I didn't even know this existed. There's this and a Audio Slave record from that same series one of the best sounding Who's Next albums that's ever come out. That is Who's Next, part of the MCA uh, heavy vinyl series that came out in the 90s. This was actually cut by Kevin Gray. Really fantastic. Remastered from the original analog master tape by Kevin Gray at Future Disc. We've got a classic record. So I went to Expona a couple weeks ago and there was a room in there with, you know, in the high dollar, area where like the multi-million dollar systems were and I heard them play this was one of their demo records this is the 45 rpm on looks like clarity vinyl it says yeah 200 gram clarity of stairway to heaven so a single sided 
45 RPM cut of Stairway to Heaven, but this was one of the tracks they played. It was in the room with the SAT turntables, like a $300,000 SAT turntable. There was a nice run of Japanese white label test pressings from John Coltrane. There's a Love Supreme in there. This is a Kulusi Mama. White label Japanese test pressings. Super rare. John Coltrane rides again. This is how they came. This was the generic test pressing sleeve, but very cool. Very rare. Maybe less than 10 of these things exist in the world. Very hard to find. An original first pressing Japanese Led Zeppelin II using the two-tone label. Here's another test pressing. Ooh, this is uh, Africa, John Coltrane. Lots of classic record stuff. Here is a 200 gram of uh, classic records Genesis selling England by the pound. Here is a sealed test pressing of Led Zeppelin's Coda. Classic records, again, all analog mastered from the original tape by Bernie Grunman. Here is a sealed test pressing of Houses of the Holy. Classic records. Here's a classic records 200 gram version of the Who's Quadrophenia. Unfortunately, these went out of print kind of before the vinyl boom, so they're relatively difficult to find. This is Credence Clearwater Revival uh, Analog Productions. I think these were done by Kevin Gray. Yeah, Kevin Gray at Coherent. These things sound absolutely friggin' bonkers good. Really good. Highly recommended. I wish they were still in print. They sold well. Unlike a lot of audiophile records that sold marginal when they were new before the vinyl boom. My allergies are killing me. My nose itches so much. But before the vinyl boom, a lot of like the Sade Audio Fidelity records, they go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars now, but they hardly sold back then. But the Credence ones, the Credence records did. All analog cut from the master tape by Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman. This is uh, The Doors, Waiting for the Sun, DCC. Numbered. This is super cool. There's two of these, a standard version, and this particular one. This is Led Zeppelin's BBC Sessions. This is classic records, but this box is a sealed test pressing box. And it's numbered. They only made 20 of these. This is number one of 20. Still sealed test pressing box. The now very difficult to find, Let It Be Naked. Mostly audiophile records, but like the Let It Be, there's some oddities in there. Check this out. This is Woodstock, but this is a white label promo of what, I mean, white label promos of key albums of this era are so hard to get. I want to say there's a full run of all the classic records, Peter Gabriel. Here's Peter Gabriel 4. Classic records, 200 gram uh, melt, Peter Gabriel 3. They notated them, so rather than giving the nicknames, they actually gave them numbers. Check out this nice early Japanese pressing. Now, late 70s, early 80s Japanese pressings, much easier to find than this era. These are so hard to find, especially with the Obi of uh, uh, David Bowie's self title on Derham. Nimbus, the High Five company back in the 80s who advertised in, what did they advertise in? Uh, I think it was called Hi-Fi New, Hi-Fi Magazine or some practical Hi-Fi. Anyways, these Nimbus Supercuts are very rare. They made 1,500 of them, but there's a copy of Little Feet, Feet Don't Fail Me Now. The Nimbus Supercut, for instance, of Sgt. Pepper, it's like six, $7,000. Wish you were here, thousands of dollars. They did about 30, 40 records. Those two are the best. They did Kind of Blue. They did some Eagles. They did Band on the Run, which is awesome. But uh, they did this Earl Klug, and they also did the Little Feet. These are very, very difficult to find. Again, they did 1,500 of them. They're not common. Jackie McLean's Jackie ba Jackie's Bag. This is a Classic Records 200 gram. This was my favorite, not my favorite mastering, although it's done by Bernie Grumman from the Master Tape. These were the best covers, I think, ever done. They were like Tone Poets, but they were more replicas of the originals. Uh, and I kind of dug that. They took up less shelf space. Although the Tone Poets are great. I'm getting to the point now where, unfortunately, i got to start taking records out of the house because I've accumulated records in every 
room in the house and I kind of need to make some space. Oh, check this out. Classic Records Mono, 200 gram, Jimi Hendrix Axis Bold as Love, but it's a test pressing. So cool, very cool collection. There's not a lot of cheap records in this collection, but there's a lot of gas, so it's gonna be fun to watch. I'm, I have no idea if this stuff should go for a bunch of money, but maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Fingers crossed. Uh, if it goes well, you know, there might be another batch of this same gentleman's collection coming my way. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes this Sunday at 11 o'clock. Check us out at the website at theingroup.com. Until next time.